the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Sisters and brothers, most welcome. This Mass is being offered for Mel Major. Friends, this is the fourth Sunday of Lent. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, now let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with the prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. All the leading priests and the people were exceedingly unfaithful, following all the abominations of the nations. And they polluted the house of the Lord that he had consecrated in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, persistently sent his messengers to them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they kept mocking the messengers of God, despising his words and scoffing at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord against his people became so great that there was no remedy. Therefore the Lord brought up against them the king of the Chaldeans, who burned the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, burned all of its palaces in fire, and destroyed all its precious vessels. The king took into exile in Babylon those who had escaped from the sword, and they became servants to him and to his sons until the establishment of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had made up for its Sabbaths. All the days that it lay desolated, it kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in fulfillment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia, so that he sent a herald throughout all his kingdom, and also declared in a written edict, Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, 
May the Lord his God be with him. Let him go up. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue cling to my mouth if I do not remember you. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept. When we remembered Zion, on the willows there we hung up our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Let my tongue cling to my mouth if I do not remember you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, God might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is you, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. This is not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Jesus Christ, for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but the one who does not believe is condemned already for not having believed the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil, 
for all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed but those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in god the gospel of the lord The fourth Sunday of Lent is called Lettere Sunday. Lettere means rejoice. This is from the first words of today's liturgy. In the entrance and the font start with the rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. The central theme of today's readings is that our salvation is the free gift of a merciful God given to us sinners through Jesus his son. The readings stress God's mercy and compassion and remind us of the great love, kindness and grace extended to us in Christ. In the first reading taken from the second book of chronicles we learn the compassion and patience of god god chose cyrus the great a pagan conqueror to become the instrument of his mercy too and salvation of his chosen people exiled in babylon in the second reading paul tells us that god is so rich in mercy that he has granted us eternal salvation and eternal life as a free gift through Jesus Christ today's gospel provides a theme that parallels the gospel but on a much higher level Jesus the son of god becomes the agent of god's salvation not just for one sinful nation but for the sinfulness of the whole world through john chapter 316 the gospel teaches us that god has expressed his love mercy and compassion for us by giving his only son for our salvation nicodemus nicodemus the wealthy pharisee and member of the sanhedrin meets jesus by night and begins a long religious discussion jesus explains to him that he must believe jesus words because jesus is the son of god and by referring to the story of moses and the bronze serpent further explains God's plan of salvation just as God saved the victims of serpent bite from the death through the bronze serpent he is going to save mankind from its sins by permitting the crucifixion and death of his son Jesus because of the love of God for mankind is that great Friends now we come to the message of the day we need to love the cross the symbol of god's forgiving and merciful love as a forceful reminder not only of god's love and mercy but also of the price of our salvation the crucifix invites us to more than simple generosity and compassion It inspires us to remove the suffering of other people's misery. It encourages us not only to feel deep sorrow for another's suffering, but also to try our best to remove that suffering. Hence, let us love the cross, wear its image, and carry our own daily cross with joy, while helping others to carry their heavier crosses secondly we need to reciprocate god's love by loving others 
God's love is unconditional, universal, forgiving and merciful. Friends, let us try to make an earnest attempt to include these qualities in sharing our love with others, especially during Lent. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, knowing that God has given us life by the cross of his Son, we pray to God for needs of our times and for the mission of the Church to bring salvation to all people. The response is, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the Church, community of ongoing reconciliation, healing and forgiveness, for Pope Francis on the anniversary of his election, and for those preparing for the sacraments of initiation and wedding, from the Lord, let us seek mercy. Lord, help mercy. For the poor and the starving of our society and the world, and for those who share their bread with others by fasting and almsgiving, from the Lord, let us seek mercy. Lord, help mercy. For the sick and the homebound, especially Jennifer Dennison, Philip Parica, Rose Marie Bowick, Melissa McKinnon, Kitty Patno, and for their caregivers, from the Lord, let us seek mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners and visitors, for those who have died this past year of the COVID virus throughout the world, for those who have died recently, Christina Wouters, Harry Pott, Tad Kluska, and for all who mourn, from the Lord, let us seek mercy. Lord, have mercy. For all our benefactors and volunteers, and for Mel Major, for whom this Mass is being offered. From the Lord, let us seek mercy. Lord, help mercy. For all our parish activities and projects, and for the personal and family intentions of each one attending this Mass. From the Lord, let us seek mercy. Lord, help mercy. O God, rich in mercy and love, graciously hear our prayers and grant that the saving work of your Son, who is light from light, may scatter the darkness of our times with the spirit of your loving kindness and enlighten us and those preparing for the sacraments of initiation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with the humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with the joy these offerings, which you bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them, present them to you uh, as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness, make you holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and ended willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Mel Major, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Cecilia and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At this Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace. I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
my sisters and brothers behold the lamb of god behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb lord i am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word my soul shall be healed Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. friends now we pray together heavenly father in these trying days we humbly seek your guidance wisdom protection and help in regards to the covid-19 pandemic that you would grant speedy recovery to those inflicted with the virus and protection to those who have not come into contact with it we admit you o oh lord that you are the only authority and power to see us through this situation for we are mere mortal people totally reliant on you and you alone as your son jesus taught us look to your heavenly father above for all things and it will be granted unto you so merciful father we trust in you and the words of your dear son jesus to look after us in this time and every time in jesus name we pray amen the lord be with you may almighty god bless you the father son and the holy spirit may he send the go in peace glorifying the lord by your life thanks be to god